So, warning. A while ago, I promised that I would make some videos showing off some of my Star Trek uh, models. Now, they're dusty, so I thought I'd show them off and brush them with a barbecue brush. Um, I've remade my studio, so it's three in the morning. Now, I'm going to start off with this one. Now this was bought to me from my grandfather, by my grandfather. Back in, you can see how dusty it is. That's crazy. Back in, that's kind of disgusting. <laughs> Back in 1997. Now, it was just after First Contact had come out. And, uh, I was entering my horrendous, horrendously busy Star Trek phase. So, this is based on the Enterprise E. Uh, it's a radio. <laughs> and uh, not a very good one at all. But. The only channel it could pick up. Was um, Classic FM. Which seemed appropriate. Considering the uh, Enterprise E. This is a. I don't know if this is rare or not. And it's slightly discoloured. But this is quite possibly. My second favourite model of the series. And I've just realised I'm showing off some ch a bit of cleavage. But hopefully that will get the viewers in. So, um, this is crazy dusty. <laughs> the stand isn't very good either. It's actually quite a cheap model to be honest. But the stand has the Star Trek display. Sounds like a creaky old ship. <laughs> Next up, we have Diamond Select, or I think over here in the UK, it's called Art Asylum, the NX01. So this is from the Star Trek Enterprise which I have mixed feelings about. But the model itself is gorgeous. You know, it's just a <laughs> the amount of dust coming off of this. The model itself is lovely. Uh, these are all lights and sounds, which I would show off, but I don't want to ruin the effect because, you know, they're loud and... I should figure out what the speakers are actually. And then... Now, this model itself is quite nice. Uh, they released a series of quite a few of these, including Enterprise B recently, uh, Excelsior, Battle Damage D. Uh, and I quite like to get them, but they go for kind of quite expensive on eBay. And um, whilst I like these, I'd much rather have new phones. <laughs> the um, the stand isn't very good, and the way it sits, <laughs> it kind of wobbles a bit. But uh, yeah, so that's that one. Next up. Klingon Vorcha class. Cloaked. Uncloaked. Now, this ship was used in the 
Star Trek The Next Generation and was Gowron's um, flagship until the Negvar. Uh, this one, I think this was like £10 off of eBay. Uh, it didn't come with a stand. And uh, so this is the Playmates one. So this is from 1993 or 94. So it was pretty old. It's in pretty good nick. Uh, the lights still shine up on the warp core. Uh, yeah, no, on the warp missiles. Uh, in the back. Uh, I really like the Klingon ships. They didn't make many big models of the... Um, of these ships, of the enemy ships, like um, there was a Roman Warbird, but I've yet to find one on eBay that looks like it's in good condition. So, yeah, so that's that one. It's got four sound effects, and uh, it's good. I like this one a lot. So, that's that one. We have my favourite ship ever made. This is the Enterprise D, as you know. This was the first big one that Playmates released in '92, I think. Uh, it has four sounds. The no sails light up. Uh, it still works, but it did not come with a um, stand, unfortunately. So, on my collection, it just kind of sits there. <laughs> uh, it's in pretty good condition. It's yellowed a little bit, but, you know, it's 22 years old, so, um, that's to be expected. Left out in certain light and flame retardant and stuff. But these, are, these are my favourite toys I've owned. I had this one as a child actually, uh, with me and a friend. And I remember we all owned these Star Trek things and uh, we used to swap them all amongst each other for different things. I'm fairly sure that one friend in particular ended up with everything in the end. He was a shrewd bastard. <laughs> But the level of detail on this is pretty good. Uh, 1701D. Now, let's see this one. This <coughs> beautiful creature is the anniversary edition of the original Enterprise. Um, as you can see, I don't dust very often. And um, it comes with a stand. It's got three. Is it three sound effects? Where are the sound effects in this one? It has four sound effects. Uh, and they're all, you know, they're loud. And, but then it's a gorgeous model, this one. It really is. And uh, I was never, never used to be a fan of the original Enterprise. You know, I always preferred the D. But since Abrams released that monstrosity of the Enterprise in the new movies, I've uh, come to appreciate it a lot more. And it's just a really nice like, model. Um, this cost me 35 quid second hand I think from eBay but it was pristine and I don't regret a single one of these the ones I don't have that I know they released were there was a runabout which goes for quite a bit of money there was the Goddard Enterprise D um, a shuttlecraft there was Voyager 
which goes for crazy money. Which, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to pay, but the, the point is, is I'm just not very keen on the Voyager ship design. The Intrepid class I always thought was a little lacklustre. So there's that. Next up we have... <coughs> now this... This is the first contact model of the Enterprise-E. Now, this model it's not very good, to be honest. It's fully working, and uh, I got a quite a bargain because it finished. The bid finished at like, like crazy, like two, three o'clock in the morning, and I stayed up to try and snipe it, <laughs> which you know isn't unusual because it's like three in the morning at the moment. But she is not based on the final sovereign design of the um, Enterprise E. She's based on some initial design work. So, I'll just show you, where is it? If I just show you this one, It's going to take a keen eye, <laughs> you know, if you know your Star Trek, to recognise the differences. But the new cells are further apart, longer arms. She's just sleeker designed, and people watching this probably have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the noises on it are crap. And um, they released two versions of this. They released this one and the uh, special insurrection one, which was released just before Playmates lost the license to Diamond Select. But it's the Enterprise E, it's a model you just have to have. <laughs> Next up, this one looks a wee bit battle damaged. She's not in great shape. This is the Defiant, still fully working, but this is the one of only two models that we had from my childhood. This was owned by my friend, and uh, when I started collecting these again a few years back, he got it out of storage and uh, gave it to me, because these in pristine, they go for about £50 on eBay, normally. I've never won one. And uh, she's not in great condition. But uh, it's something I've always wanted. She's part of my collection, you know. She's She was raised in 1996, again by Playmates. So this is 18 years old, and uh, my friend played with it quite a bit. Like to the point where he drew all over it to add better, um, like ink marks and to improve it and battle damage. And you can see the buttons still work. If I just, <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> the battery needs replaced, and I don't think they do work on this one. But, um, I'm very pleased to own her. No stand. I have two left. Now, this one's quite rare from my experience. The Klingon Bird of Prey from Star Trek Generations. Now, I've only ever come across a couple of these on eBay over the years when I've looked. The Vorcha and the Warbird come up fairly often. And there's loads of the Enterprises, but I've only come across one of these. Now, I won this bid for £52. I was happy to pay that. But the guy sent me an email saying that it was damaged. And I was like, oh, what kind of damage? And what the issue is, is on the back here, there's a slight crack. A tiny crack. 
and um, he sent me a message saying is that an issue and I said not really and he charged me £15 including postage £15 including postage for this it's like an absolute bargain it was just before Christmas, it arrived on my birthday, it's fully working, three sounds, engine, which go on for a while, including the light, £15, that's enough, there we go, <laughs> and this is one of the pride and joys of my, it's, uh, the only odd thing I'd say of this, is the fact that it comes on a Starfleet the camera seems to think my hands are face it comes on a Starfleet plate I know they've released several more versions of this you've done select but um, this is a rarity that I love the clean bird of prey it's massive now I've got one more for you before I have to is um, the Star Trek Generations Battle Damaged Enterprise D model. It's almost identical to the 1992 version that I showed you earlier. Except that It looks like it's been run over by a truck. <laughs> this is the battle damage bit. It's got a few different sounds on it. It's in perfect condition. These were all fully boxed when I bought them. But when I moved house, I didn't see the point in buying the, get, keeping the boxes, because I never intend to get rid of them. I had this as a child for a while, and I wanted it back. I swear I've got more toys now than I ever had as an adult, as a kid. The special bit of this, apart from the dust, are these bits. Now I love this. This may sound a bit loud, so ruin some movie, but. Bits of the ship blow off, and it looks almost organic in there. <laughs> and uh, I just thought that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. This was not a cheap model to buy second hand, but I was quite happy to pay it for the nostalgia, and I just kind of like looking at them. So, this is the last one. This was a request someone made a while ago, and uh, I thought I'd finally do it. Now, I'm sorry if the brushing isn't as slow as people like, or the show and tell isn't as long. But as I've said many times, I have no patience and no attention span. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you later.